Hi, welcome uh, to Wise Guys. This uh, is a video on algebraic fractions and it's again reducing the fractions to equivalent fractions. So uh, we reduce, and in this case we're reducing the fractions by dividing the numerator and the denominator by a common factor. All right. So when you see something like this, the first thing you do, if you can, is factor. What we're looking at here is the difference of squares. And if you're not sure how to factor difference of squares, just check out that video on difference of squares. So when we factor difference of squares for this 49, which we know is a square because it's 7 squared, right? And this is a square as well. It's 3 squared. So we end up with 7 squared minus 3x squared. So when we factor it, we end up with 7 minus 3x times 7 plus 3x. And that's all divided by 3x plus 7. And we know that 7 plus 3x is the same as 3x plus 7, just written backwards to one another, right? So these two cancel, and our final answer is 7 minus 3x. So that one was pretty, pretty nice and simple, right? Which is it's a good way to have them. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Now we have to factor a little bit more. We have to put a little bit more thinking into this. First of all, we don't know that they're factorable, so you try and see if they are factorable. So for the top, again, I just start with my two brackets. And on the top, I can see that to get my x squared, I have to have an x and an x here. Then I think, well, what do I have to do to get the minus 3? Well, the only option really is 3 and 1, so I'm just going to put a 3 here and a 1 here. Now I'm noticing that there's a minus sign here, which tells me that these two signs are different. So then I have to think about the minus 2. I'm assuming the minus has to go here and the plus has to go here because I know this number, the minus 3x, is added to the 1x to give me this. Okay. So there's the top. I think. And the bottom, again, just bracket, 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 bracket. Okay? To get the x squared, only one option, x and x. To get the 6, we have a couple of option, options. We could take 6 and multiply it by 1, or we could take 3 and multiply it by 2. But I know that when these numbers are combined, added or subtracted, I have to end up with an x, or a 1, I should say, because there should be a 1 in front of that x. So then that tells me I should probably use the 3 and the 2. So then I'm going to put the 3 here and the 2 here. Now I have to think about the sign. So we have a minus 6 here. That tells me these two signs are different. I'm also noticing that there's a negative sign here. So then I think, okay, I know this comes from the addition of this. So the 3x added to the 2x. So then I'm assuming the negative goes there and the positive goes there. And because I've already prepped for this video, I know that that's actually the case. If you're feeling unsure, what you do is you walk through it. So you multiply through and check. Does this actually equal that? Because you have to be right. Okay. So now we say, all right, the x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 cancel. So these two are gone. And our answer becomes x plus 1 divided by x plus 2. And that is the answer to the question. Okay, last one. Now, these video or the, the ones that have the number in front, they're harder, right? So let's 
take a look at this one and see what we end up with. Oh, I'm going to do it down here. So we end up for 2x squared for the 2x squared piece, I'm just going to I'm also running out of ink. 2x here and x here. Okay? Now, thing I have to be thinking about is the 15. Normally when I'm working with these kinds of um, trinomials and I have a number in the front and a number in the back, I usually multiply these through. That gives me a 30. And then I ask myself what times what gives me a 30. I'm also thinking about the fact that those two numbers that I've come up with have to either add or subtract to give me the x. So the numbers I'm picking are 6 and 5, okay? And that's the numbers that I'm picking to give me when they add together to give me this x, all right? So I'm thinking I probably need a 6 and a 5. I know for 15 I can have 5 times 3. In fact, that's my only choice, right? So then I think, okay, the 3 probably goes here, the 5 probably goes here. And the reason for that is this times this will give me the 6, this times this will give me the 5, okay? Now I have to think about the sign. I see that it's negative here, so that tells me the signs are different. I also notice that I end up with a plus x here. So I'm assuming that it's a plus here, and a negative here. And the reason for that is this gives me 6x, this gives me minus 5, so that's going to add up to the x, right? Now for our denominator. Again, two brackets, 2x here, x here. 5, 5 here, so that there's the only option is 5 and 1, which is nice, right? But where are we going to put that 5? We need them to add up to 7. So I'm assuming that the 5 goes here and the 1 goes here. And of course, we're working on a section that's talking about reducing, so we can sort of assume maybe that it probably should look the same as this. But can't always trust that, right? Now we have to think about the signs. We see that we have a positive here. That tells us the two signs are the same. We also have a negative here, so that tells us the signs are probably both negative. And you can always just walk through it and check to see if it's correct when you're walking through the question. All right, I've already prepped for this, so I know this is correct. So at this point, we can see that 2x minus 5 divided by 2x minus 5, these cancel, right? And we're left with x plus 3 divided by x minus 1. And you can see for these types of questions that you really do need to be comfortable with your factoring, okay? So that's it for that video that's been brought to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a really great day. Take care.